Hey everybody, this is Grimcad, and we are going to be playing some Enter the Gungeon. Enter the Gungeon is a game that I am super excited about, and sadly I've been trying all morning to play and record and get everything just perfect. But it hasn't been working. <laughs> this is like my fourth recording of it. So, uh, we've played a little bit of it, but we're going to jump right in, and hopefully our audio levels are good. You can hear me, and you can hear the game. We are in Chamber 1, Keep of the Let Lord. Now, this is a twin-stick shooter roguelike. Um, similar to... Uh, the Binding of Isaac, but um, very different, of course. Um, let's use this first screen to go over some of the mechanics. Um, we move, we hit a button to shoot, we can reload, we can do a dodge roll, which we are invincible to bullets during the first portion of the dodge roll, kind of like while we're jumping up, but when we start jumping down, we become vulnerable against the bullets. Uh, another thing we can do is we can flip over tables to use as cover. Pretty awesome. So, this game, I mentioned the similarities to Isaac, but there are also some major differences. It's less about collecting effects, which change, um, our guns and things uh, are like our, our, our starting gun, and it's much more about finding new guns, which do a variety of strange, unusual, and fantastic things. That's the boss already. We're not ready to take on the boss. Um, I'd like to try to find another gun at least. Woo! So pretty much everything about this game is about guns. Um, we are fighting bullets, as you can see, they are the bullet kin, and they live in the gungeon. Oh, that was bad damage. <laughs> I walked right into that. Um, if we look at the top left of the screen, there are some red... Uh, mm, shells. Um, those are our hearts. Um, each heart is two hits. Below that, we have blue shells. Those are our blanks. Blanks are super useful, and uh, frankly, I do not use them enough. But when you use a blank, it clears the entire room of enemy bullets. So it's sort of a fail-safe, you know you're going to get hit if you can use a blank. Well, you just don't take damage. So, very, very nice, as you can imagine. Um, below that and to the left, there are a number of keys. And... Mm, to the right is our number of spent shells, which is our currency. Picked up an item, and I don't know what it does, so we will check our ammo Nomicon. <laughs> and it's C4, it's stick boom active, can be placed and triggered remotely. More useful than a standard time bomb, but less convenient than a proximity mine. Plastic explosives can be manually triggered. Very nice. We start with the marine sidearm, which is semi-automatic and has infinite ammo. It does not reveal secret walls. Uh, the marine sidearm was brought to the gungeon by a low-ranking primerdine soldier. Though this gun appears sturdy, it has been known to fail when it is most needed. Um, I don't think you can actually jam your guns. Uh, I haven't seen that anyways. Uh, I imagine if it did happen, I would have run into it by now. And we start with a passive item called Military Training. Hold facing enemy. Passive. Memories of your years in training. Better reload speeds and a weapon accuracy. Which is very nice. Whoop. Okay. Those, uh, gun wizards? Oh, god! We took damage right there, and, um, 
I kind of yelled like a little girl. That's all right. It happens. Uh, the wizards are bad. I was going to say. Um, oh yes. Also, there are elements of the level that you can use to fight with. As we can see, I shot that, and that chandelier fell. Um, there are explosive barrels you can push around, then shoot and explode. Pretty cool game. Um, some of the things, items that I have seen so far, even even though I've not gone very far, ooh, some of the stuff that I have seen is pretty nuts. Uh, I do have an issue with uh, not reloading. <laughs> So occasionally I will not fire and the little reload bar will come up and <laughs> that's why. Oh, let's pick up this half heart or half shell or whatever you want to call it. Uh, this right here is a shop. Sell some blanks on the table. An anvilian? Anvilian? Okay. A mega dowser? Which looks like a super soaker. And there's this little guy right here who you can sell guns to. But we don't really have any guns to sell to him, so. Oh, I should probably try to. Okay, well, that was just an explosion. Our little. Space bar item, even though <laughs> I'm using a controller, so obviously I'm not. Uh, I really wish I would have saved my key for that chest. Because it does seem like there is a difference in chest quality. I don't know if that's my imagination. I kind of don't think so, seeing that awesome chest to the chest we did have. <laughs> There's a couple of things. Oh, yep, see, I didn't reload there immediately that we can try to do, but we'll see. A little bit of money. Now, there is one secret that I know of, so we're going to look just a tiny little bit in these surrounding rooms to see if we can find. A water barrel. Nope. Alright, well let's go hit the boss. And then we'll come back. Hopefully we can get a key in it. I'm not holding my breath. Uh, this game is just filled with pulp culture references. Um, and this boss right here is actually one of the references I've noticed. Um, Rapid Fire Raptor at Gatling Gong. He's a reference to uh, Metal Gear Solid. Um, they had a. Uh, what was it? Vulcan Raven, I think? Yeah, so that's a nice little shout out to that. And uh, the game's full of those little shout outs. So if you see some that I don't point out, Please, point them out in the comments, because I would be interested to see what they are. Ooh. Now, so far... I used a blank right there. Oh, and I didn't reload it there as well. So far this has been the only boss that I've fought, however I know there are other bosses that you can fight. Oh, that was lucky. If we can beat him without getting hit, we get a health upgrade. So that's definitely something I'm going to be trying to do. Yeah, that did 
<laughs> that didn't do much. But we're just gonna keep circling this guy and things are looking pretty good. There we go. Whoa, my controller's going crazy on that. We get some health back, and look, he even dies the way that, uh... <laughs> the boss for Metal Gear died, too, with a bunch of little ravens coming and picking him to death. We got another gun! We got a Witch Pistol. Spells your doom. And we got the Master Round of the First Chamber, which gives us another part. So let's check out this gun we got. Ooh, something was added to the gungeon, but I did not see what it was. Because apparently hitting the directional buttons will <laughs> make it go away, which seems a bit silly. Witch Pistol spells your doom. A chance to transmogrify. Which means transform. Uh, the Witch Pistol is a hexed variant of a standard magnum, a favorite of magic users seeking to become familiar with gunplay. And the first chamber is passive. This rare artifact indicates mastery of the first chamber. Apocryphal text received from cultists of the order indicate that the gun and the bullet are linked somehow. <laughs> somehow. That's a slog over there, but we're gonna go over there anyway. Even though we did not pick up a key, there's... Uh, well, there's a thing you can do. You can shoot open chests for a chance to receive the item inside. Now, we didn't get it, we just got junk. <laughs> Next time, use a key. So, fair enough. All right, and down to level two. Love the little guy jumping into the board. I love the way this game looks. I love the art direction and style. Chamber two, the gungeon proper. And down it goes. We're gonna play with the witch pistol for a minute. Okay, turn them okay. Oh, I just sort of kicked the chicken too. Um that's interesting. I I don't think I got any shells for that. Oh That was bad. Yeah, I'm actually gonna stay away from that gun because, for example, that enemy I know gives you a lot of um, spent shells, and we didn't get any, and I want to use my shells to buy things. Okay, <laughs> that went better than I expected. There's a buzzsaw in the wall. We'll just kick that over for, you know, shits and grits. Okay. Um, the Gunkin, which are like these little guys we're fighting right now, can, uh, also... use, um, the tables and blow up the things too, so we still have to be aware of our environment. Good. That one went pretty well. I was a little worried about it. 
we're not using our uh, active item very much. But that's okay. So to be fair, I don't think I like it very much. But we'll put it down to you or myself. And I wonder what happens when we don't use it. Nothing. It's just there. Oh, can't go that way. That's one thing that I don't like as well. Um, the camera kind of scrolls in the direction that you're aiming. And so if you're not aiming in a direction, you can get caught off guard. Pricked. No. Oh, I glanced away from the screen for a second. <laughs> You can get caught off guard. Alright, but we're still doing pretty good. We're mowing through these enemies. That little meat cube guy kinda sucks. Oh. Dang it. It's possible for you to get, uh sort of caught on the walls. Oh, bad play. Um, I'm really rusty <laughs> when it comes to this sort of game. Now I've come across this a couple of times and I have no idea how to get into it. A regular key does not seem to do it, but there's always that room and then this room next to it. Is sort of a semiculture or something like that. It's a pulk roll. <laughs> tomb. It's me a long time to think of the word tomb. Alright, what are you selling? Poison vial, some keys, and some hearts. Uh. Well, I'm gonna explore the rest of the floor first. I will probably wind up buying those hearts. Hearts are pretty hard to come by in this game. So... You should not feel bad for needing to buy them. The game's not really gonna give them to you. Well, you know, I say that, but you can't pick up some hearts. Obviously. Ooh, that was lucky. I do not like these shark bullet things. Now, also, breaking all this stuff on the sides doesn't actually seem to do anything. Those guys are interesting. They don't seem to hurt you. Ooh, unless that, like, electricity or something is around them. I don't know. Sometimes they seem to hurt you, sometimes they don't. Uh, they're rubber bullets, but, uh, I don't know. It seems a little inconsistent. Alright. Teleport up here. Took more damage than I really would have liked. Um, let's go ahead and buy. No, let's not buy a heart just yet. Let's wait until we fight the boss. Oh, 
a boss I haven't encountered before. The Shell of Serpent Amoconda. Now, one of my... One of the things I don't like about this game has to do directly with the bosses. I feel as if all the bosses are just a slog. They have tons and tons of hit points. You wind up wasting so much ammo. Oh, speaking of which... Get out of the corner! Get out of the- Oh my gosh! So I don't know if this is doing more damage than the other gun. Uh. Alright, that was pretty terrible, but I didn't really know its patterns. <laughs> 18 minutes. Well, okay. Well, that could have gone much better. Probably should have bought the hearts, at least until I get better at the games. But uh, now I know. Well, thank you for joining me for episode one of Enter the Gungeon. Please like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. I uh, hope you have a good day, and peace out.